Okay, three kind of quick, a little bit scary examples of simplifying down using exponent rules. So the first thing we want to do as we get going on this is whenever we have negative exponents, I typically say to myself, all right, let's rewrite these with positive exponents. So I'm going to go ahead and bring along the outer uh, two as an exponent for the, the time being. Now, as we go through, I usually go just one at a time and kind of say to myself, all right, am I going to leave it where it is or do we have to move it? Whenever you have a negative exponent, you have to move it. And what I mean by move it is you can move it down to the denominator or switch places basically between numerator and denominator and make it a positive exponent. So in this case, the x is raised to the negative power, so we're going to move it down to the denominator and make it a positive exponent. The y is also raised to a negative exponent, so we're going to move it as well and make it a positive exponent. So they kind of switch places, right? We moved down here, we moved up with the y's. Um, but that's how you get rid of negative exponents and make them positive. All right, the other simplifying down we could do here is we have that two on the outside of the big set of parentheses. We're allowed to multiply each one of the exponents on the inside of the set of parentheses by that two. So this will end up being y raised to the three times two makes six. And for our denominator, that exponent also gets multiplied by the 2 from the outside. So x raised to the 2 times 2 makes 4. Not too bad. They do get a little bit more complicated. <clears throat> so again, on this, I'm going to kind of delay dealing with that 3 from the outside. And I'm going to try to simplify on the inside a little bit to begin. All right, so we do have constants. We have 20 over 8, that can do a little bit of simplifying down. All right, those are both multiples of 4. So if we took out you know, a multiple of 4 from the 20, that would leave us with 5. And 8 divided by 4 leaves 2. So 20 eighths reduced down would be the same thing as 5 halves. All right, next, with each one of these a's, b's, and c's, what I'm going to do is kind of say to myself, one at a time, does it stay where it is or does it move? So a to the negative third, because we have a negative exponent, that's going to move down to the denominator and make a positive exponent. The b to the fifth, just kind of systematically going through here, the b to the fifth is already positive, so I'm going to leave it where it is. C to the negative exponent, it's negative, so let's move it down to the denominator. So C to the positive fourth down in the denominator. And then moving on, we still have A to the negative second. It's negative, we want to make it positive. So I'm saying A to the positive second up here. B to the negative first, again a negative, so let's make it positive by moving it up to the numerator. And then finally, we have c to the third power. It's already positive, so let's leave it down in the denominator. Again, I'm going to delay dealing with that exponent on the outside. So the 3 is coming along for right now. Let's continue simplifying down what we have on the inside. So because we have a's, numerator, and denominator, let's deal with those. What I'm going to do is just focus on the a's. This is where I ask myself the question, okay, we have a's numerator and denominator, where do we have more? And how many more? So in this case, we have more in the denominator and just one more, so you could say a to the first power down there if you wanted to. Now the b's are a little bit different, right? They're not numerator and denominator, they're both in the numerator. So to combine these together, we want to add our exponents or count up how many copies of b are multiplied together. So in our case, we're going to have b to the 5 plus 1 more is going to be b to the 6th power. And then also the c's are on the same level. So this is, again, where you're counting up how many copies of c are multiplied together. You're adding the exponents together. So 3 plus 4 makes 7. All right, last thing we need to do in this case is we haven't dealt with that 3 that the whole thing was raised to. So we want to bring that to the inside by multiplying each one of our exponents by 3. Now usually students get this pretty good as far as they do the b to the 6 times 3 makes 18. Bring the 5 along, bring the 2 along. They do a raised to the 1 times 3 makes 3 and c raised to the 7 times 3 makes 21. And that's usually where students leave it. However, we've got to remember that's really 5 to the first and 2 to the first power as well. So those exponents need to be multiplied by 3 so it's going to be 5 to the 
third power and two to the third power. All right, if you're gonna make a mistake, that tends to be where it comes from. A little bit of simplifying down, like that's a good answer where we got to right there, but we could figure out five to the third power is five times five times five is 125. And then b to the 18th, uh, two to the third power, two times two times two makes eight, a cubed, sorry, c to the 21st. And that's the best answer possible. All right, one more, and we'll call it a day. Again, kind of a complicated one. As we get going on this, we've got a several steps along the way. I typically tend to just leave the, the exponent on the outside alone. Now in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, we've got a square root over the whole thing. Instead of a square root, let's write that as a fractional exponent. So one half would be the equivalent as an exponent to the square root over the whole thing. And then let's work on reducing down as we go. So we have the five and the 20. That'll reduce down. Five over 20 is equivalent to one over four. We have x's, numerator and denominator. So where do we have more and how many more? Well, we have two more in the numerator. And then you may notice on the y's, instead of rewriting these with positive exponents from the very beginning, we have the exact same y to the negative fifth in the numerator and y to the negative fifth in the denominator. So when you have the same thing, numerator and denominator, and they're multiplied by the rest of the numerator and multiplied by the rest of the denominator, they get to cancel out, right? Same thing, numerator and denominator makes a one. All right, so those are going away. So really, I know this looks kind of complicated, but I don't think it's gonna be that bad. So let's go ahead and start bringing those exponents from the outside to the inside. Now we could start different places, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the one half and bring that in by multiplying it by each one of these exponents. And we have to remember that four is raised to the first power. Now I'm kind of ignoring the fact that we have one raised to the one half is still gonna be one. All right, so three's on the outside. As I multiply the inside by one half, we get x raised to the two times one half, leaves us with one for an exponent. And then four raised to the one half power. All right, it had an exponent of one, so don't forget about that. All right, to finish this up, let's bring the three to the inside. So again, this is a process of that three is gonna get multiplied by each one of these exponents. But before we do that, let's think about that four to the one half power. All right, we'd get to the, an equivalent answer in a second, but four to the one half power really means the square root of four. So we could reduce that before we bring the three in the, to the inside. So the square root of four makes two. Now let's bring that three to the inside. We'll get x to the third power, two to the third power, Two to the third power means two times two times two makes eight. So there's our final answer, best answer we can get to along the way. Now if we had taken a second um, and brought it to the inside as I was indicating up here, you would get four to the three times one half power, so four to the three halves power, which is going to be the same thing as the square root of four to the third power, or four cubed could be underneath the square root. That's gonna reduce down to be the exact same thing as that eight if we give it a little bit of time. All right, so hope this helps out. Take them one step at a time. Make sure you're following mathematical rules as you go through um, for these exponent rules. It takes practice, but it gets easier as you continue practicing. All right, good luck.